Ginger McMinn County Mayor. I want to say thank you. Sorry. Good afternoon. My name is John Gentry, McMinn County Mayor. I want to thank you for allowing us to take some of your time to give you an update on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that has now uh, affected McMinn County as well. I want to begin by saying I'm extremely proud of the actions I've seen taken by the wonderful people of our community during this time of both the known and the unknown. Not since the days of World War II have citizens' daily lives faced this level of interruption. We pray interruption doesn't lead to great sacrifice. However, we must be prepared and willing if that is the necessary course. Many businesses have voluntarily closed or restricted access. This Sunday, our churches embraced the social distancing challenge and held online services. Many restaurants voluntarily shifted to takeout or drive through service only. Volunteers have stepped up to help the at risk and family members are visiting loved ones in the nursing homes and assisted living centers by looking through closed windows. Our educators have taken bold steps to help the children entrusted to them even while school is out. Many small independent businesses have closed even at the risk of significant financial loss, all in an effort to help minimize the spread of the virus. I have great optimism that the overwhelming majority of our citizens will enter into a social contract with their own conscience to do the right thing at the right time. And the right thing to do right now is to significantly limit our exposure to the virus. I know the cure can sometimes be worse than the disease and everyone is working hard to make sure the required steps to stop the spread doesn't cause irreparable physical, economic, and social harm. Opinions will vary and that is okay. These are uncharted waters. Another right thing to do right now is to support one another. I've already heard stories of generous tips being given at takeout counters for the waiters and waitresses losing their income. I know of a young lady that was sent to get the precious toilet paper we hear so much about, and she refused to take that very last package on the shelf. I have seen numerous Facebook posts of people willing to make grocery and pharmaceutical runs for the elderly. And I personally have been called, texts, and messages by so many praying for God's protection and guidance. And that is always the right thing to do, and I can promise you that is always appreciated. I don't want to take a lot of your time this evening, but I do want to introduce Athens City Man Manager Seth Sumner to review the recent executive orders passed by Governor Bill Lee and also address the actions being taken by the City of Athens. The City of Athens is where the vast majority of our commerce takes place and the most likely place to find large gatherings. City Manager. Thank you very much, Mayor Gentry, for your leadership in this critical time in uh, an unprecedented uh, time in history. Uh, today, uh, we saw the latest numbers come from the Tennessee Health Department. Um, yesterday, we, we were at 505 total Tennesseans, and today that is 615. There are now two McMinn Countyans among that population of uh, testing COVID-19 uh, positive. Uh, it will only be in the days ahead we'll know what this will truly look like as more uh, tests are conducted and those results are provided back to us uh, and what the far reach of this is going to be in our own community in McMinn County and across the state and across the globe. The uh, executive orders, uh, there have been quite a few and I want to just br briefly detail those. Um, but uh, I also wanted to take a moment because the governor made another statement today uh, in which he established the COVID-19 Unified Command. This new team is uh, built to streamline the coordination between TEMA, the Department of Health, and the Department of the Military. This pandemic challenges every aspect of traditional government response in a crisis. That's what our governor told us today. This new team will address health, economic, and supply issues across the state of Tennessee. They're in their first meeting today. There have also been a number of executive orders that we've tried to keep up with on our social media and inform you and our businesses uh, over the last few days. These orders are strongly encouraging citizens to act in the best interest of others to act in your own self-preservation, and to take common sense steps 
to save lives now. To date, the main points of the governor's orders are all non-emergency dental procedures, all non-essential surgeries and outpatient procedures today in Executive Order 18 are now ordered to halt. Yesterday we heard in, uh, in Executive Order 17 that food and drink service businesses, all restaurants, bars, clubs, uh, that they are to exclusively offer drive-through, takeout, or delivery. No longer dine-in. Gyms have been ordered temporarily closed. Nursing homes and assisted living facilities are all limiting access to caregivers only. Let me emphasize this for our citizens and our businesses. All businesses are encouraged to assist in limiting personal contact and maintaining proper hygiene. Take every precaution that you can think of. Wearing masks, wearing gloves, conducting business in new ways, using email, by telephone, even if you're standing 10 feet away from each other, to limit your interactions with other people. In accordance with our governor's orders, yesterday I asked the Athens Police Department to deliver the governor's order to all applicable buildings and businesses in the city of Athens. This was accomplished over yesterday afternoon so that even if they were closed yesterday when they arrived this morning to open, they saw the order and they understood that the governor and our state needs their help. The Friendly City is continuing to serve you. We're here at your service, and I ask that you call us if we can be of help to you. The days ahead will be long. We'll see many more of our citizens and friends infected with COVID-19, and we have to do everything we can right now, today, to stop the spread of this virus in our community. Sheriff? I'll just echo very quickly what's already been said. Um, just stay home. Uh, that's the simplest thing that you can do. It's the most effective thing that you can do is just simply stay home. If you have to leave, let it only be for things like medication and for food. Um, not, anything that you can put off, you should be putting off. If you really want to make a difference in this, if you want to play a role in this and help us to help you to reduce sicknesses and reduce deaths among our own population, then just stay home. It's that simple. Um, everything that's already been said, uh, using per, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, limiting gatherings of, of uh, more than 10 people. Uh, this is an, an inconvenience for a, a week or so, maybe a couple of weeks, but we can do that. We can do that for each other. We can take care of each other. And, and really right now, that's the best thing that we can do. Law enforcement, government continues to operate. We actually have in the county uh, a few more deputies out on patrol because of our school resource officers being available to put on patrol. Uh, I've spoken with the other chiefs, and we all agree that saturating our areas with law enforcement, uh, letting you know as citizens that we're out there to assist you is our most primary goal right now. Uh, we do appreciate and we thank you for what you're doing. Uh, we're seeing a, a decrease in the number of 911 calls and requests for assistance. We would perceive that to be a good thing, uh, that, uh, that you're taking care of yourselves, you're staying at home. We don't have as many people out on the road, but it needs to be even more than that. We need, to, we need fewer people out on the road. We need fewer people in stores, fewer people in businesses. If you don't have to be there, simply don't go. We're going to get through this. This is a, a very trying time, but at the same time, it's a good time to spend time with family. It's a good time to spend time with those that you care about. Uh, as we've said before, it's a good time if you don't do anything else, but just study your Bible. It's, it's a good thing to do and spend some time with yourself. Um, but it's important to keep in mind that the less that we're out uh, making personal contact with folks right now is critical. The countries that we've seen that have had a drastic reduction in the number of cases did what we're asking you to do. They, they instructed their populations to stay at home. And when they did, those numbers began to, to drop to the levels that they're at today and they're starting to see some recovery. So again, we ask you just to do that. It's the simplest thing you can do is just stay at home. Limit your, your, your time out in public and certainly limit your time out with other people. 
I want to thank the city of Athens for being with me today. And, and as I, I said earlier, that the vast majority uh, of our largest gatherings take place in the city of Athens. But I, I do want to represent our other four cities. I've spoken with their city managers or their mayors today and told them I'd pre uh, present a, a brief message from them. Uh, so city of Etowah, they wanted me to let you know that the library, the Carnegie Library is closed at this time, as is the community center. The city hall is closed to uh, in-person traffic. They will, it is staffed. Uh, for you to give them a call. They will answer your phone calls and try to help you any way they can uh, over the phone or electron other electronic means. Uh, of course, police and fire protection are all on go there, uh, still very active. Uh, city of Inglewood, the city hall has a drive-in that remains open. However, the lobby is closed uh, to, to in-person traffic, as well as the library is closed. The park in Inglewood is open please limit activity to less than 10 people at the Inglewood Park. Calhoun, the library and City Hall are both closed. However, City Hall does have a staff member available to answer the phone for your questions. Nyota, likewise, City Hall is open, but closed to in-person in -person traffic. They are staffed uh, fully, I understand, at this time to handle your uh, uh, phone calls and online uh, requests and inquiries. McMinn County, McMinn County Government Services. On Friday, March 20th, in response to our first um, confirmed case of COVID-19, I did issue a state of emergency. And that was not done to instill a, a cause of panic. It is merely a, le a legal designation that allows some leniency and, and really clear some barriers uh, for county government to be able to uh, to get the necessary resources we may need uh, to help stop the spread of this virus. It is for a seven day period, maximum allowed by law, to be revisited next Friday to see if we need to continue. I have instructed McMinn County Government Services that are primarily confined to office environments. This excludes our first responders and our health department to reduce and alternate staff in an effort to maintain continuity of service in the event of a confirmed infected employee. These are relatively small office staffs and any confirmed cases would jeopardize the delivery of their services potentially for several weeks. All public schools in McMinn County, Athens City and Etowah City as well remain closed through April 3rd. Courts remain open to emergency cases only, no in-person uh, court cases. That is, they are suspended till March 31st. If you have a case and you do not know the status of what you're supposed to do, call the Circuit Court Clerk's Office 745-1923, 745-1923. The office which probably uh, receives the most in-person traffic is the County Clerk's Office, Melinda King's Office. This office has closed its lobby to in-person traffic today. Um, the reduced office staff will be available to help via phone and online. The kiosk that is located in the lobby of the Food City is still operational and open for business. Please have your renewal letter with you. Registration and placard renewals may also be done online at www.tncountyclerk.com. tncountyclerk.com. And mail-in renewal service is also available. Dealers may uh, still uh, are asked to call ahead for service. Veteran Service Office, strictly by appointment only. The lobby is now closed to in-person traffic. Please call 744-1605, 744-1605 if you need the service of our Veterans Office. McMinn County Main Courthouse, we have restricted access to the lower floor through the handicap entrance only. It is staffed by a McMinn County Sheriff's Deputy. Visitors must call before entering and have approval from the office they're visiting to be able to go past the officer. We will have check-in there. You also have to sign in and give us contact information uh, in case something happens and we need to contact you uh, at a later date. Again, remember these offices will be operating under reduced staff conditions. Eureka Park, Bicentennial Park, right now those parks remain open for your use. We understand that physical activity is an important part of health. However, 
We monitor these daily. If we see larger crowds congregating, we will um, be forced to close those down. We've asked the users of playgrounds, if you see anyone, don't let that crowd get over 10 children. Really prefer less. Uh, we're asking folks to uh, uh, just continue to do what they've been doing and be res respectful of one another. Uh, limit your time. If you see someone waiting, limit your time with your family on those to, to no more than 30 minutes. In closing, well, before we close, I want to address a few questions. Uh, I know the city manager's also uh, received a few that we want to hopefully uh, give answers to uh, today. I've received many inquiries. Who, who is the infected? Uh, we do not know. I do not know. I do not know where they live. I do not know who they are. I was contacted by the Department of Health and said that you have a, an infected case, uh, infected person. They are at home and they are resting and recovering. Uh, that is the extent of the knowledge that I have uh, concerning the person who's infected. I do not I understand. I've just received word we have a second case. Statistically speaking, we will have many more. We just have to prepare. Uh, I think we'll see a spike, and then we'll start seeing a decline as, as, as people respond accordingly. The good thing about this, we have the ability within us as a community to limit the exposure to how aggressive this virus will be is in our hands. And the more aggressive we are, the quicker we overcome it. So I do expect a spike. We have literally probably close to a hundred or more tests that have already been done that we're waiting results on. We must be prepared that some of those are going to come back positive. Um, we have to understand that that's the course of action that we see other communities across the United States going through. That's why we have to remain vigilant. I, I echo the sheriff's comments, stay home. If you do not have to get out, stay home. Uh, the quicker we get through this, the quicker we get back to the wonderful um, uh, life that we have in McMinn County. Our numbers are going to rise, but our resolve will have to rise with it, and I believe it will. Uh, a couple of other questions that we've had re uh, revolve around uh, salons and barbershops. Uh, that is under, uh, and I incorrectly spoke earlier, we thought that was necessarily under the Tennessee Department of Health. It's actually under Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance, and they are working with the Department of Health to come out with some guidelines on those. In the meantime, common sense prevails. If you do not have to go, do not go. If you're an independent owner of a salon or barbershop, you need to assess. Uh, I would not allow more than the one customer in the shop at any one time. I would wear a mask uh, as, as the one providing the service and the one receiving the service, and I would also wear gloves for the ones uh, providing the service. Um, that's the best you're going to do. The safest thing you can do is, is, not, do any, is not provide the service for, for about a week. We're going to reassess at the end of the week where we go from here, but we uh, are assuming and preparing that we will see a spike in cases. Uh, city manager, do you have some other questions you'd like to address that you perceive? So I've also been talking to some of our local industries and, uh, and other businesses. Uh, there are some models that, uh, that, have to, that, that you can't conduct your business without touching another person, without being in close contact. We want you to make the best decisions that you can to protect your livelihood and most importantly, the health of others during this time. Use common sense. Follow OSHA and CDC guidelines. There is a specific document that you can find either through OSHA or CDC that will tell you how you need to take care of these things. Um, we're really asking for everyone to work together to serve the best interest of the whole. Uh, and that's to stop this virus um, by not coming in contact with other people. Our, as far as our factories, uh, we do have some industries that are, that are halting. Um, we have some that are still going uh, full speed ahead. Uh, we are paying very close attention to those things. Uh, I know the mayor and our uh, economic development authority, Ms. Kathy Price, um, is, is uh, staying in very close contact with those folks. If you have small businesses, uh, what the governor is, is asking, and, uh, and we're, uh, we're uh, dittoing up here, is, uh, is for you to um, 
is for you to find alternate means of conducting your business if possible. If you can do something by phone or, uh, or by email or electronic communication at all, even though it may not be your, your day-to-day -day, uh, activities, try that. We want you to keep your business going as long as possible uh, and we want to watch out for your livelihood as we're protecting lives. Uh, and so um, there are going to be some, uh, some areas where we have production. Of course, we've got our grocery stores. We've got certain products that are made locally that are vital to fighting this disease and protecting uh, health and welfare across the state and around the world. Uh, and we're going to be uh, making sure that those, uh, those industries have everything they need to be successful during this time. Uh, and help us fight this uh, dreaded virus. Uh, I would like to add that I, uh, we mentioned playgrounds and things of that nature, and we have had those open. I am closing the city of Athens playgrounds now. Um, we're going to help further prevent folks from congregating, and while children may be very healthy and may not actually exhibit the symptoms, uh, they will in large be the carriers of this virus. And so as much as we can keep them from congregating together and sharing germs, as children like to do, um, we're going to do that. And so we are going to be closing the City of Athens playgrounds while our parks remain open. Please get out, walk with your family, enjoy. Hopefully we'll get some dry, nice weather again like we had this weekend. Uh, enjoy that. Um, one other thing is uh, where you're getting your information. Folks are still spreading rumors, lies, hoaxes, and these are very ill, mean-spirited things that are going on right now. Don't pay any attention to that. If your information is not directly from McMinn County, the City of Athens, our state government, the CDC, or the White House, then you should not be copying and pasting. You shouldn't be spreading rumors. Don't spread lies. Check and verify. Everything that we've said can easily be searched, identified on a legitimate news source or from your governor's website. Please check and verify those things. We have to stay calm during this time. Uh, we have to take care of each other. And I'm just asking for the best in humanity to appear right now. We love our neighbors. We're going to take care of each other, and right now, that means not hugging. That's tough for some of us. That means not sitting down and sharing that conversation with our best friend in close proximity. That's hard for us. But we have to do it because we love each other. And we're going to see each other through this. It's going to be a matter of days, a matter of weeks, maybe even months. But we will be through this, and we'll be stronger than ever in our faith and in our family. And let me tell you, we're going to have one heck of a party when we're clear of this. <laughs> and I can't wait to see everybody there and give everybody a hug. <laughs> I'll just add uh, what the, county, uh, the city manager was saying there. Uh, there's no need to panic, uh, certainly to, to, to uh, be responsible to each other. Uh, we're a, a united front up here. If, if you don't hear the information from us, it, it's probably not true. If you don't hear from the governor, it's probably not true. And, and you really do do a disservice to everyone else. None of us at this table enjoy saying what we're having to say today. Nobody in the room that's with us enjoys being a part of this right now. But it's, as the city manager said, we care about you. That's why we're asking that you do these things, that you limit your exposure, you, you limit your time with any other person uh, outside of your own family. Uh, and we do that because we truly care about you and we want to, to see a, as quickly as possible an end uh, to the situation that we're in. I want to close with just a reminder that our first priority is going to be to stop the, stop the spread of the virus. That's our number one priority at this time. With that is to protect those that are high at risk. That first line of defense starts with family. And after family, it's our it's our, it's our our, our buildings of faith. We have over 200 faith community churches and other forms of, of faith uh, facilities in McMinn County. Pastors, preachers, take inventory of your congregation. 
I'm asking you, know your congregation and those who are at risk. That's where that first line of defense has to be with the family and the faith family. We are working right now with other groups to take care of those others that, that don't have the, that community or the family local to take care of. And we're going to do our best, but that's the best first line of defense. Next is going to be some economic um, uh, tough times for some folks. We all realize that. And we already got a team that will be working on that. And we hope to be coming with you, uh, back to you uh, in, in a few days with some, some uh, resources to help those. Obviously, our, our eyes are somewhat all glued towards Washington as they're putting that package together. Most likely that will come down and, and go through the states and through local government to help deliver those services. And when the time comes, we'll make sure all those resources are available and we'll make sure that our folks get all the help they need. Uh, again, we know we're going to have a, a, a spike in the short term, then we'll have a decline and we'll reassess how, what we're doing to make sure that decline stays uh, on that direction and life will return back to normal. And like the sheriff said, it won't be af much after that, and the city manager will, will have a lot to rejoice for. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon, and uh, we'll be back in a couple of days. Thank you.